Before we get into today's video, I wanted to share that I now have a Discord server and membership here on my channel, where you can choose between tiers to receive exclusive emojis, early access to my videos, sneak peeks, along with shoutouts at the end of my videos as a thank you. If you're interested in joining either of them or both of them, I'll have them linked in the description. Representation explained the entirety of the Agrest and Graham de Vanelli family lore, such as how Felix and Adrian came to be, Cat Noir learning about Capelonk in a way none of us were expecting, and with this episode being the very last one before this season's finale, the setup we have going into episode 25 confirmation is so extreme with so many things being on the line, and has only added to my theories on what it is I think we can expect to see by the end of this season. So let's get into analyzing one of my favorite episodes of all time, Representation. The episode begins with us learning about the new people running up for mayor, and since we've yet to see episode 23, Revolution, we can most likely assume that Chloe's reign as mayor has come to a quick end, that we will see Adrian and Kagami heading off to London, and hopefully Adrian finally telling Marinette the truth. Over at the school dance, with Adrian being the only thing on Marinette's mind, she is heartbroken and can hardly mask away her true feelings about the entire situation. That is, until Felix shows up disguised as Adrian with a plan. When Argos and Kagami show up, we can see that the two two have their eyes set on Marinette and are questioning if she really is who they believe she could be, and that being Ladybug. It's revealed that earlier this season, in the episode Perfection, when Kagami is looking for Marinette to check up on her, that it's then when she overhears her discussing her concerns with Olia and mentions how she lost the miraculous, meaning that now Alex, Suhan, Luca, Olia, and Kagami and Felix are aware of Ladybug's identity. Throughout this episode, there were many memorable Filigami moments, especially during this scene with the beautiful sunrise in the background. However, the one I felt to be really important and that will probably play a huge role in the ending of this season is when we see Felix being hesitant on trusting Marinette slash Ladybug and when Kagami goes to say, she's my friend. We don't have a choice. My mother and Gabriel Agrest will never allow us to love each other freely. Only Ladybug can help us. Ever since the episode Emotion and especially Pretension, I had a theory that we would eventually see Felix and Ladybug come to good terms and even form an alliance with each other so that they could save their loved ones from being stuck in London, and with what went down in the end of this episode with us seeing Adrian and Kagami now being forced into these blank and empty rooms so that they could never escape the grasp of their parents' control again, this all only further adds to this theory becoming a reality. Both Marinette and Felix will have the same motives, and with Ladybug beginning to trust Felix as the new and rightful Peacock Miraculous holder, and later learning why he went as far as to give almost all of the Miraculouses to Monarch, seeing them working together is something I'd love to see. Hair change! So as Marinette is being lured into the school, at the same time Gabriel and Miss Sarugi have now realized that Kagami and Adrian have left their rooms, and while Miss Sarugi would immediately go into a panic and demand Gabriel to akumatize her, he has other plans and that being to one, take the other ring back from Natalie, and oh my gosh, what happened to her in the span of a few episodes or less for her condition to worsen this badly. Her red streak is now gray. And the other thing being to akumatize himself into Night Tormentor, which would be a new take on his form as the Collector, granting him the power to awaken people's worst nightmares. So at this point, we have Marinette chasing after Felix, who she believes to be Adrian, Cat Noir looking for Marinette, and Gabriel hunting down Marinette in order to find Adrian. You know, it's always nice to see any of the Kwamis happy, such as Dusu here, and as Argos would go to create a new senti monster, this would be the beginning of Kagami and Felix's presentation to Marinette, and this lore drop was too much to handle. The story begins way back with us being introduced to Emily, Amelie, and their parents who were king and queen. While the queen was only expecting to have one child, she'd go on to give birth to two girls, those being Emily and Amelie. They'd have to decide who would be the one they would entrust the fate of their kingdom to, and because Emily was born a couple of seconds earlier, she 
you would go on to be the chosen one and given the rings. As Emily and Amelie would go on to grow older, we'd see a larger difference between the two in personality and interests. While Amelie was more well behaved and did the most that she could to please her parents, Emily on the other hand was curious and escaped from her duties anytime she could. Regardless of her parents being concerned as to whether they'd entrusted the kingdom to the right daughter, they continued to give Emily her freedom and allowed for her to venture off and study beyond the sea in another kingdom, where she would go on to come across Gabriel, a humble and talented tailor and fall in love. Even with her parents disapproving of this, their love was so strong that Emily gave up her rank, wealth, and kingdom. What is so interesting though is that these rings were once one. Learning about this made me think back to the episode Felix when we see this interaction between Amelie and Gabriel. And you guys, it all makes sense now. In that episode, Amelie says, those jewels have always been in the Graham de Vanilli family, not the aggressed. So from Amelie's point of view, you can only imagine how frustrating this all is. Not only did her sister, who was the chosen one, divide these family rings with her husband, but with Emily later on falling into the state she's in and ultimately handing over both of the rings to Gabriel, it becomes even clearer as to why Amelie wanted them back. Carrying on with their past though, Amelie continuing to please her parents would go on to marry a wealthy but heartless man, not being cold fathom. Throughout this season, we've gotten to learn more and more about him and even before this episode, it was made clear by Felix that his father was truly a monster. Now with both Amelie Emily and Emily being married, all that was left to complete their families were children, but neither of them were able to have one. This is when Gabriel and Emily resorted to using the Peacock Miraculous, even while knowing the consequences that could come with it. This led to Colt becoming furious and jealous. How was it that after all this time, Emily was able to have a child but not his very own wife? Emily, being aware of her sister's pain and sadness, proposed the idea to Gabriel to offer them the Peacock Miraculous as well. Colt would have never relied on sorcery, nonetheless one with fatal consequences, but because of his and Amelie's desperation for a child, they had no choice. And in return, Colt would give Gabriel his best knight so that he could guard Adrian. After months went by, both princesses were able to give birth to their children, and while Felix's amok would be stored away in Colt's ring, Adrian's would be placed in the twin rings. While I always speculated Adrian's amok to be in the twin rings, I could never wrap my head around how it was possible for two rings to be able to control him until seeing this episode. Considering that these rings were originally meant to be worn together and were one, it goes to show how this is possible since a while back Thomas did confirm that an amok cannot be spread across multiple objects. Gradually, as Colt and Emily's conditions worsened, Felix's father grew more and more hateful towards him, calling him a monster and controlling him at every given moment. It wasn't until Felix realized that his life was connected to the very ring his father had worn all this time and from that moment, after his father passed, he took back his freedom and made it his goal to free Adrian too. However, the only way he could be sure that his life was no longer in another's hands was by getting a hold of the Peacock Miraculous, and because of that, it was necessary for him to trade off majority of the Miraculouses to Gabriel. While I would imagine that at this point Marinette is aware of Gabriel being monarch, if it is that this presentation was presented to her all the way through in the way that we saw it. However, I'm still hesitant as to whether that's something we can fully confirm, seeing as Gabriel was continuously referred to as the tailor. However, she was able to put the pieces together to realize Felix was in this story, and Gabriel being a tailor is a big enough hint. Felix and Kagami would then go on to tell Marinette that they need Ladybug, and while she'd wake up to this all feeling like a dream, seeing the amok pass by her and the Ladybug and Cat Noir poster, she knew in that moment that she needed to prioritize helping them as Ladybug. And as if this wasn't already all overwhelming, over with Cat Noir, we can see him facing off with Night Tormentor and be hit by his powers, causing for a parallel reaction. This would result in Cat Noir awakening in one of his worst nightmares, and that being of him as Cat 
cap long while holding Ladybug as she'd slowly go on to crumble away in his arms because of his cataclysm. I really like the way Cat Noir saw himself in his dream because while the colors are inverted, they still give off the same meaning. When you look at this, you mostly see orange. And while colors can be perceived in many different ways, orange can be known to represent grief, rage, and even death, which all heavily align with this very moment and the entirety of Cat Blanc. Now that both him and Ladybug know about Cat Blanc, this can either push them to finally communicate about this and get one step closer to being able to reveal their identities to each other, or for some more time, continue to carry the weight by themselves of this traumatic event. I do intend on discussing this topic further once this season comes to an end, so stay tuned. Fortunately, this nightmare would come to an end after the Resistance showed up, and since Ladybug wasn't able to make it to the scene, the Akuma was stored away in a jar until then. I will continue to cherish these small Lady Noir moments. Something to remember from the very beginning of this episode was that originally, Adrian had intended on coming to Paris as Cat Noir to see Marinette, but also so that he could tell her the truth about him being Adrian. However, because of his new memories as himself as Cat Blanc, he wouldn't be able to do so. I gotta say, I was really nervous watching this scene because while he originally wanted to reveal his identity, now he had changed his mind and the two were so close here to unintentionally revealing their identities to each other. Everything about this episode was so thought out and it makes me even more excited for what the quality will look like for our last two episodes of this season and the aggressed arc. As always, be sure to let me know your thoughts and theories down below and subscribe so you never miss the tea on the show you love. And I'll see you guys in the next one.